Hello and welcome back to RC Model Reviews. Today I'm going to fix some of my own radio gear because it gave me a bit of a bit of trouble the other day. I was flying my DLG, you know, my Hobby King 950mm DLG. Love this plane. I was flying this model and suddenly stopped responding to the radio gear. Fortunately, I have the failsafe set in this, so it didn't fly away or crash into a big heap. It just did some really tight turns, just a very tight, slowly descending spiral, which gave me plenty of time to have a look and see what was going on. I looked down at the transmitter, the LCD was blank. So I turned it off, turned it on, it went again. Why is that? Of course, once the transmitter started working, I just brought the plane back in, caught it. That was the end of the problem. But why did the transmitter stop? Well, let's take a look because it is a bit of a common fault with the Turnergy 9X. If you've got one, you want to be just careful that it doesn't happen to you. So let's have a look at what it was and how I'm going to fix it. But first, let's take a look at how I have my failsafe set up. Now, as you can see, I've got my, everything is uh, working here. I'm going to turn off my transmitter and you watch what happens to the control surfaces on my DLG. Here we go. Here we go. A little bit of up elevator, a little bit of rudder. And that just takes it into a, a very sort of gentle but quite tight turning circle. And that's, you've really got to make sure that you have your fail safe set up on any model you're using. You can see it's a bit of rudder offset there and a bit of elevator up. And that just means it's not going to fly away because you don't want that, especially if it's a little plane like this and it gets caught in a thermal. You don't want it flying straight, it could just fly off into the distance. But you don't want it diving into the ground because it'll end up getting broken. So. What you need to do is experiment while you're flying it. Just work out how much up and down you need to keep it in a tight turning circle. It just slowly descends and it has to descend. You don't want one where it's fairly gentle. It needs to come down at a reasonable rate. Otherwise, a model like this in a thermal, it could still keep going up and disappear. So let's have a look at that transmitter though and see what the cause of the problem was. Okay, first of all, you've got to remember these transmitters are built to a price like they are a very, very low cost transmitter. And so you can't expect the super quality components that you're going to get in a brand name unit that might cost 10 times as much. And one of the worst bits is this damn power switch. It is a horrible piece of rubbish, to be honest. Um, all my, the Turnergy 9Xs, including the, well, including the IMAX, all the Flysky 9Xs, including the IMAX I bought, whew, probably, well, must be years and years ago now, they've all ended up having a slightly noisy, intermittent power switch. And that means sometimes when you turn them on, they won't turn on, or if it's on, a little bit of wiggling and the power goes off. Now this one, I hadn't used it for a while and it turned on okay, but obviously while I was flying, it was just, and it was in the hot day, there's plenty of heat beating down on this, so it just meant that the things moved and it just didn't connect anymore. Now this one actually seems pretty good now. It isn't, um, isn't intermittent. Whoops, there we go, that was a little bit, I moved it just a fraction. So what I'm going to do now is actually going to have a look at that power switch. We're going to take the guts out, pull the power switch out, and just give it a bit of a clean. Because generally speaking, it's a buildup of dirt and oxides on the power switch that causes the problems. And you can give them a clean, makes them far more reliable. Let's get into doing that. Right, we've got the back off. This one, of course, has got the free sky. I put the telemetry free sky two-way DIY module in this one. So there's a few extra wires you probably won't find in yours unless you've done the same thing. The power switch hides behind this circuit board. So I'm gonna to have to take that screw out, remove the circuit board so I can actually get at the power switch itself. Now there are three screws that have to come out. There's the, oops, got a magnetic screwdriver. There is the big fat one that's in the middle there. And there's a couple of little ones down here on either side of the board. You have gotta remove those so that this whole board can slide out. Now it's not going to pop straight out because there's a plastic knob on the other side there, the actual power switch knob itself. So you'll have to sort of pull it and it'll pull away from the, the power switch. There we go, pulls away from the knob. There you go. Oh, actually it doesn't, this comes with it. So I was wrong, but there's the little, the offending switch in there. Now put this aside because you'll need that. What you need to do is to actually get in there with a bit of contact cleaner, a bit of um, electrical contact cleaner to make sure that switch is good. Let's see if we can get a close up of that so you can see what these things look like. Okay, so there's the switch itself. There's a little transistor in the way. They move that out of the way. And as you can see, that switch, it just has some copper contacts that run across these little bits in there. You can see two little connections and it just runs a little wiper across it. So what happens is with the transmitter being off, the on contact can oxidize a little because it's metal and it reacts with oxygen. So it ends up oxidizing. So when you turn it on, there's not such a good contact and it just solders in the back. You can also check while you're at it that these solder joints here are okay because I have seen some bad soldering on the Turnergy and the Free Sky, all of the, the Fly Sky radios. So, yep, need to look at that. 
and just get in here with a bit of contact cleaner give that a spray and it should you can even exercise it a lot helps but uh, i wouldn't rely on that because you know if you lose your transmitter while you're flying it's okay with a dlg where it just floats down gently but if it's a a bigger model a you know, heavy model fast model you don't want to take the risk so at least i'll just get a bit of contact cleaner in there give that a little bit of a squirt and a clean okay let's just give this a little bit of a squirt with my little can of stuff just a little just doesn't need much there we go that's all you need and you just work it backwards and forwards until it's able to coat all those contacts it'll the actual working it backwards and forwards will break down the oxide and then the lubricating layer left by the spray will stop the oxide from reforming hopefully now remember during all of this of course you will have unplugged your battery because you don't want to be switching the radio off and on off and on it won't do it any good at all um, but there you go that's freed it up a bit as well it was a bit stiff before it's a little bit freer now and i'm pretty sure that will have solved our problem so now all i've got to do is actually screw it back in that's all done and from the front which is working fine. Make sure you put it in the right way up because it's got an on on there. If you turn that around the wrong way, then your switch won't work the same way as it's marked. So yeah, I'm thinking that's probably gonna be a whole lot better. So now just put the back back on the transmitter and we'll see if it works. And now the moment of truth, of course, will it actually turn on again? Yes, of course it does. And that switch is now very, very, seems to be much more reliable than it was. That's, uh, just the way it should be so that's a bit of maintenance sometimes even preventive maintenance is a good idea when you've got something like these relatively low cost switches used in a really really critical role so i don't use this transmitter much anymore it's probably why the switch actually started getting a bit flaky because most of my flying is done with a tyrannus but this is a great i mean the 9x is still a brilliant buy and i just use it with the dlg the cheap dlg so i can throw everything in the back of the truck and go fly somewhere if i'm driving past somewhere i think oh might have a bit of a fly now, i don't care if i leave this transmitter laying around in the back of the truck wouldn't want to throw the tyrannus around or uh, leave it where it could get stolen but hey with this it's only 50 bucks plus the diy who really cares so there you go keep your models and yourself and other people safe by using the fail safe that your radio gear offers now i know the standard turnergy 9x with the standard turnergy module doesn't have fail safe capability and it's actually the reason that i don't recommend using it for models much larger than foamies and park flies because if you do have a problem well it's just going to keep doing what it was doing before you lost your radio link but the the free sky brilliant it has really good fail safe all the free sky receivers have fail safe use it set it up it saved my dlg because otherwise the damn thing would have just flown away in the thermal and i would never have seen it again uh, you know assuming that i couldn't get the transmitter to function again and if you've got radio gear just keep an eye on it just make sure that it's working if you see something if something strange happens don't just put it you know say oh one of those things because if something strange happens once it'll happen again and it might happen at the wrong time and if you're flying your petrol model you know towards the flight line and something goes wrong with you know bad bad things could happen so always keep an eye on your radio gear and don't don't overlook the basics like just checking everything works and doing range checks regularly and setting up your fail safes all those things can save models and they can save lives honestly they could save a life so there you go my simple 9x switch fix it'll be good for another it won't be good forever because it's a cheap switch but it'll be good for this flying season i would expect next year i'll probably do this again because as i say all my 9x's my, the ones i've had for a long time they've all had a bit of a dicky issue with the switch because it's a pretty budget switch there you go any questions put them on the bottom of this video any comments on the bottom um, if you if you've got a 9x check it out if you've got friends who've got 9x's mention perhaps point them at this video so they can see hey maybe it's worth giving that a bit of a bit of a clean make sure it works and stay tuned because the reviews and the how to's and the fix it's will keep coming on rc model reviews bye for now